Let's consider the three most common ways to find the roots of a quadratic equation. If we take the time to graph it, then we can identify the roots as the x-intercepts. The quadratic may intercept the x-axis once, twice, or not at all. Now this method is great, but the graph may or may not cross through a nice even number, so it may or may not be easy to read the root right off the graph. This method is great for visualizing, but it takes a little bit extra time, and it might be challenging to determine the exact root. The second method would be the use of factoring. Now you've experimented with this and found that for some quadratic equations, this works great. But to be honest, in the grand scheme of all the possible quadratic equations out there, well, it's truly a small portion of them that have nice numbers that enable factoring. The third method is our quadratic equation, and this method will always work. The quadratic equation is kind of like the sledgehammer of these tools. It's a bit harder to swing, but it's very effective. So why did we even learn these first two methods then? Well, they're better in many ways for learning about the patterns involved in quadratics, both quadratic graphs and quadratic equations. And once you have a good feel for them, well, then it's a good time to bring out the most powerful tool, that is, the quadratic equation. So it's time to stretch our brains a little bit as we dig deeper into the quadratic equation, better appreciating a part of the quadratic equation we call the discriminant. The discriminant, this part in purple, b squared minus 4ac, can tell us about the nature of the roots. For instance, if the discriminant was 4, let's say, then we would take a square root of 4, that's 2, and one root would be calculated when we add the 2, and the other root would be calculated when we subtract the 2. So clearly, this would give us two different answers. And so we know that this is a case where the graph would cross the x-axis twice. So if the discriminant is any positive number, well, we know that we should expect two roots. Second scenario, what if the discriminant came out to be zero? Well, what happens when you add zero to a number? Well, nothing. There's no change, right? Okay, well then what happens when you subtract zero from a number? Again, no change. It's still the same number. So, the adding-subtracting here doesn't have any impact on our outcome. So, whether we add zero or subtract zero, our root's always going to be the exact same number. The graph would only touch at a single point. And we would describe this as two roots that are the same, or we could say it only has one root. So far, we've considered a positive discriminant causing two roots, then a zero discriminant resulting in one root, and so what's left? Well, only a negative discriminant. If the discriminant is negative, well, let's see, the square root of the discriminant, we have a problem. We're needing to take the square root of the discriminant, and as we recall, we can't take the square root of a negative, at least with real numbers. So what does that mean to us for our roots? Well, if we can't take the square root of the discriminant, then we're kind of stuck here. There's no way to calculate the root. So there must not exist a root for this one. The graph never crosses the x-axis. So if we ever come up with a discriminant that comes out negative, we can stop there. We simply know at that point that the graph never crosses that x-axis. So when we talk about the discriminant of a quadratic equation, we're typically interested in a quick calculation of b squared minus 4ac to determine the expected roots. Do we expect two roots, or one root, or no roots? 